Hi, you're with Scott. This is Battery Exhausted, my vlog. It's midnight, it's always midnight. This is your right ear, this is your left ear. Tonight, special edition, Irish Rebel Songs. Irish Rebel Songs, special edition. If you just want to get straight onto the Irish Rebel Songs, then you can skip on using an annotation or look in the comments and I'll put a thing with a time and you can click it. All right. <laughs> Otherwise, listen to me have a little ramble about how I've come to own these Irish Rebel songs and my thoughts, what happened today, stuff like that. So, as is the world, as is the way of the world today, instead of finishing off the music video edit, which I wanted to do, I had to take my car to the MOT and it failed the MOT. So now I've got a great big bill and 10 days to fix my car. Hooray. Um, but serendipity strikes, doesn't it? You know, you just go for a wander while your car's in the MOT garage and pop into some charity shops, don't you? And you buy a few choice selections, one of which is this, Irish Rebel songs. And the thing that really caught my attention with this, I've got some friends in Ireland, hi. I've got some friends that are not in Ireland who have got Irish connections, hi. Thinking specifically of my friend Tree. And I know they're going to get a kick out of this, even if it's just for the kitsch value. Uh, part of my heart thinks that modern day Irish artists like Sio or Funzo or uh, Collie or people like that, they might be able to draw from this in terms of, uh, maybe not in terms of doing a direct cover of one of these records and maybe not in terms of sampling it and then rapping on it because I don't know if they kind of sound right. Right, so the battery just ran out while I was talking, which is ironic, isn't it? Because that's the name of the vlog, Battery Exhausted. And I don't know what I was just saying. <laughs> I think I was saying that, yeah, people like Sayo, you know, respect Sayo, how's it going? Um, they might not want to directly emulate these songs by lifting the beat or the flute. <laughs> um, and they might not directly want to sample it, and they might not want to directly cover it. But I'm pretty sure that just by listening to this album, which I have done just now, uh, if you are Irish, then it's going to spark some ideas. You know, maybe they want to produce a Sio and Boss Level album that looks a bit like that. <laughs> if it was me, I, that's what I'd be, you know, thinking, because that's what I was already thinking. Because my family, my mom's side, have got a connection to Ireland. Of, are of Irish descent and like this music is quite interesting and another thing right another thing is that what I found so interesting about when I was flicking through the records and I saw this is that it's Irish rebel songs and these are songs from a time when there was a war between England and Ireland England were the oppressors and were doing the bad things and Ireland was struggling for their freedoms and then it spilled out into terrorism and then the media and the distortions and the rights and the wrongs and I'm not going to get into any of that on this video but what I will say is that releasing an album of rebel songs during the, I mean this was released 1970 so like during the midst of the thick of it maybe a bit later than some of the atrocities that the British committed and maybe a bit but no in the mix of all these problems yeah so they, they released these records and this is released by a record called Hallmark Records uh, by a record company called Hallmark Records and they also released Johnny Cash, Tony Bennett, things like that so these are, there's some croony songs in here, I get it, there's some crooning and there's some lovely, you know, heralding it's a British company but maybe they were selling in the American market because, um, or maybe the Irish market uh, but maybe there were Irish people working at Hallmark maybe this is part of their passion but it seems amazing, like, could you imagine, in today's context, in other sort of conflicts, like a, um, an ISIS, I'm not going to put the IRA and ISIS together, you know, that, it's a very different thing. But if you imagine an album of rebel, uh, rebel songs, you know, um, in today, and what it made me think, of course, from thinking of that, would be that today's rebel songs are actually coming from the oppressed, but they're not... They're within our own nations now, aren't they? It's the poor and it's the disadvantaged. And, you know, that's hip-hop coming through. Rebel songs. So, you know, here's some Irish rebel songs. And if you're one of my friends through Facebook or through networking that are in Ireland that do hip-hop, 
don't just discount this as madness. I know maybe you've seen these albums all over the show. Maybe they're ten a penny in Ireland, and maybe you just see it as something naive and kitsch that I'm saying. And I know that the man on the front looks uh, considerably cliched, but I made some notes. Let's get the notes. I wanted to do this quickly because I, you know, was saying on the vlog yesterday about how I've got loads of things that I'm doing, and that does include ASMR and it does include other stuff. But I lost subscribers yesterday by putting up a video and talking and making a vlog I lost some, some subscribers so if you're one of those people that left then you're not watching this so fuck off ha <laughs> but you know if you uh, don't like my vlog then that's not a problem to me because I'm an artist and one of the things that I should be doing is driving people away from my work so uh, yeah my notes about these Irish Rebel songs which will start in a minute so uh, but, and one last thing before I give you my notes about the songs is just that this is a vinyl. It's a, a vinyl. I played it on my record player, my decks, my 1210s. There are some scratches, okay, so not enough to make it jump, but it's not wonderful sound quality, and I apologise for that if you're going to listen on headphones, but you know, it is a vinyl, and it is going to go like when you're listening to it. Um, but I haven't tweaked it sound-wise other than just give it a little bit of EQing and just make it louder. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but my little notes, because I think a couple of these songs need to be touched on. Because if you listen to the first one, Kevin Barry, it's called. Oh yeah. See, I've got loads more to say. Sorry, I was fooling you by saying it was just the notes. Now I've got this as well. Uh, I wanted to find out, it doesn't say on this sleeve, which when you're listening to it, I'll show you a big picture of the sleeve so you can have a, a good look at it. Um, but it doesn't say who, who recorded these songs. So I found out on the internet, and um, it's a guy called Oliver Kane. And Oliver Kane recorded a hard to find album for Polydor in the mid seventies. And this is a different Oliver Kane who, from recorded for Dolphin Records in their early days. He was in the Eccles Show Band, the Fontana Show Band, the Freedom Fighters, which is this, the Impact Show Band, the New Currency, Frankie McBride and the Highwaymen, the Paddywagon, the Big Four, and the Kane Band. And this group, the Freedom Fighters, I mean, fair play to them. I think they should get some credit because I'm ripping it and putting it on the internet. Um, the Freedom Fighters were made up of the same people in the Fontana Show Band. So that's Rory Gallagher, who left and then Oliver joined it, uh, the Fontana, uh, I don't know, some people. Oh, here we go, look, the Fontanas, this is who did this. Oliver Keane, lead guitar, Tony Walsh, rhythm guitar, John White, organ, piano, guitar, accordion, Oliver Tobin, bass, Finbar Ring, drums, and Bernard Tobin, baritone and tenor saxophones. So they don't actually tell you who sung it, but I'm guessing it was that dude. Oliver Kane. Right. So yeah, I wanted to get this on the... Scott from Nerd. Edit this. <laughs> I wanted to get this on the internet because I found it quite like, interesting and remarkable. And I just thought that, you know, some of my Irish friends might like it. So that's why I'm doing this one. Uh, and also, it's talking about art, isn't it? It's something positive in the world. It's not me having a rant about something that I find annoying or frustrating or difficult. It's me expressing some positivity about art, so here goes. Track one, I didn't like that much. <laughs> but track one, Kevin Barry, you know, if you just listen to track one, you think it's all gonna be like this, fair enough, but it's not. It's a bit of a croon croonathon track one, but it's, you know, it's interesting. Track two, The Merry Ploughboy, and you might already know these songs. Again, in my naivety, being English, British, mixed British, whatever, you know, be English, um, I might be patronising and you might hate me for saying these things if you actually are Irish, but here it goes. Uh, the Merry Ploughboy, I thought was uh, really good. It almost deserves like a garage club mix or a two-tone ska version because it's got a really like, like beat to it. And it's quite interesting content as well. Number three, The Boys of Kilmichael. A beautiful, rhythmic, poetic, poetic, a beautiful, rhythmic, poetic storytelling with flute, which I thought was really lovely. I thought it was, and it, you know, it made your hair stand on end. Track four, 
take your partner by the hand for the wearing of the green, which was a bit of a jig. I thought it was quite cool. Track five, Peter Crowley. It seemed to be sung by someone with lockjaw, but it was very haunting. And when I say lockjaw, I didn't seem to sing. I say lockjaw, he didn't seem to announce his, his words, but I don't know, maybe he was having a bad day on that one. Side two, it starts with black and tan gun, which sounds to me like a slow number by the Pogues. And it was chilling, it was really good. Track two, my only son was shot in Dublin. I had to listen to this one about seven times because it kept buggering up on the, uh, on the computer when I was trying to record it. So I know most of the words to this now and it's anthemic, moving, it's a sing-along song. Uh, and it's kind of like the Irish Roy Orbison. It's really good, really good. Number three, crooning, but with sort of dark content about rebellion and painful things and darkness. That's Bula Vogue. Number four, Tipperary Far Away. And I was hoping this was going to be It's a Long Way to Tipperary or some sort of remix because my granddad used to sing that to me. But it wasn't. It was a crooning song and it was interesting and, yeah, another croonathon. And number five, Roddy McCauley, uh, kind of finishes on what I would describe as a pop song to rebel songs. So I think they should have reorganised them and finished on The Boys of Kill Michael because that was, in my opinion, the most moving of all the tracks. But they are all moving because they all talk about really uh, difficult topics. You know, and when I say difficult, I'm English, living in the shadow of the world of the IRA and the... Uh, things that happened, the troubles, they called them. Um, you know, I grew up in the 80s where I was aware of it, but I was a child, so I didn't have any opinions about it. Since then, I've learned different things about it. And to be honest, I don't feel like I, me, the English, you know, I don't feel like that. Um, you know, from watching my vlog, I don't feel particularly nationalistic as such. In some ways, everyone is forced to, but I appreciate that, you know, some horrible things were done by the English and the reasons they did them were pretty unsound. Uh, and I also will counter that with saying the fear of terrorism from the IRA was also probably bad, you know, overall. Um, and I know that Irish people with the rebel song, you know, they're going to, oh yeah, but you know, this, yeah, and that's the problem, isn't it? it yeah, buts and this and that. Well, I didn't do it. I wasn't involved. And I think it was, there was some bad on both sides. And I think it was a bit unfair what the English were doing in the first place to cause it all to happen, I agree. So, but now it's all done, isn't it? It's all finished. And like now, it's all finished. If you released an album of Irish Rebel songs, it would be like a, a look back to a time in history when things were happening. I could understand that release now. But if you released during the conflict, you know, I'm just, and I, that made me think, like I said earlier, of other conflicts in, in the world going on right now where there are rebel groups and you know bombs and things like that and if they released an album whether it be sold in the shops <laughs> and now there's an alarm going off just to spoil the rest of this audio before we put the alarm the alarm the music on so without further ado I'm glad you enjoyed me talking if you didn't unsubscribe I am um, an artist, oh, I t I'm pretentious, oh, I'm such a wanker, uh, but I am, and, you know, I do this, and I do that, and I do the other, and, like, things we're going to talk about in this channel from here on in are going to still include veganism, are going to still include the occasional rant, you know, it's just, it is what it is, isn't it, so, stay with this vlog, stay with this channel, because you never know what's going to happen, you just don't know, <laughs> and I'm not doing it like all those others. Going in for the kill. Right, so let's listen to some Irish Rebel songs. I'll take some nice photos of this. Enjoy. Be good, my little pukos. I just wanted to quickly say as well that when I had the idea that I was going to make this video, I had pictured myself sort of sat in a cosy room with maybe a fire on, a record player, listening to the Irish Rebel songs, talking gently to camera. But that vibe and energy just isn't in me right now, is it? So I've done it like this. 
It's not quite how I imagined it. And also, I've got these ideas about art, not critique, but review, you know, to raise art in this vlog, to present art to you, show, you know, I like it, I look at it, I listen to it, here it is. Um, and I haven't really done a very good job with that, have I? I haven't done a very good review. Gave you a little bit of information about, you know, who was in it, did a bit of research, but yeah. So apologies for that. I was thinking of doing a series about how to make YouTube videos and it would be different than other people's because it would be from my perspective. But I was going to do it without following any of the rules or guidelines or ideas set out. Like I could do this. So I don't know if that would work either. <laughs> like a how to edit video that isn't edited. Do you know what I mean? Like there's something in that. There's a nice idea in that somewhere. So yeah, enjoy the Irish Rebel songs. I'll be back with you shortly. Don't leave. In Mount Joy Jail One Monday morning Hide upon the gallows tree Kevin Barry gave his young like a soldier and do not hang me like a dog for I fought to free old Ireland on that bright September morn bakery where we fought them hand to hand why not shoot me just like a soldier for I fought to free Just before he faced the hangman in his dreamy prison cell, ready so. He would not tell the names of his companions and other things they wished to know. Farewell 
that seems to grow between all Ireland and her faithful sweets who love to wear the green. Oh, the wearing of the green, oh, the wearing of the green. My native land, they cannot stand for the wearing of the green. I care not for the tissue, and I care not for the rose, while ringing from us whistle neither. Down in the town of Old Bantry, where most of the fighting was done. It was there where a young Irish Shot by a black and tan gun as he raised himself up on 
Go! Oh. 